All right, welcome everyone to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed Podcast with Bonnie Seratori. I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Seratori is a new paradigm shaman and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. And you can find all her work at spiritualacceleration.com, including all episodes of this podcast, Consciousness Unleashed. And today we're going to be talking about shamanic journeys. And um, I for- want to ask you first about how you changed your title that you usually call yourself a master tracker and that's mm-hmm. what you've been using for a long time <clears throat> right. and now you've mentioned that you want to call yourself a new paradigm shaman so how about we start with that because that's obviously going to be related to what we're talking about today Bonnie mm-hmm. yeah okay so <clears throat> for me what happened was I used to be called a master shaman okay that was my title and then more and more people were claiming to be shamans. Okay. So what began to happen is kind of like when you have 50 people doing haircuts, it waters everything down. You don't know who to go to. And for me, it was really about um, people claiming to be shamans that really were not. And, you know, offering different types of healings and things of that nature, whatever they were claiming that they could do. But for me, it was like, I don't want to be associated with this kind of title with this label anymore, simply because it just, it doesn't have the effect, the power that it once had. Okay. So then <clears throat> change the title, you know, to a tracker. Cause that's what I do really. I track energy, but um, just recently I just had the knowing, which is how I do things. It's how I make decisions is with the knowing and it's time to co- begin to, cl- re- you know, claim being what I really am, which is truly a shaman and, and to, to separate the normal shamans, you know, because people claim that I'm a dare shaman, whatever, by calling it the new paradigm, because what I do seriously is of the new paradigm, okay? The energy frequencies and the ways of working and shamanism in the old paradigm, you know, I used to do that. I used to, you know, do drumming. I used to you know, use the drumming, use rattles, use feathers, all kinds of different things, moving energy, going into altered states. And then, you know, I started really just didn't need any of the paraphernalia, didn't need any of the kind of ceremonial stuff, none of it. And then just really started to just go into energy places, you no know, need, you know, simply fast. This is my training now. People no longer need to do any of the going into an altered state. All I have to do is start shifting their awareness. So everyone who's taken foundations is now working at that level. Okay. We're no longer using anything to reach altered states or um, to move energy. So the energy of what I do really is of the new paradigm. It's extremely accelerated. It's extremely potent, powerful, and it changes energy frequencies in an instant. That's what shamans do. Okay. We find energies, we release energies, we track, we, you know, find different places, unravel things, heal things, all kinds of stuff, all on the energy planes, all the frequencies of the energy body, all of that. And so for me personally, I like that I, I like that I really am a shaman and I feel like it's time to start claiming it again. So rather than being just a normal shaman, it's like, what's the truth here? I am a new paradigm shaman. And that's the truth. That's it. I have skills and abilities beyond any other shaman that I've ever even heard of or anybody that I know has ever even heard of. So it's I'm claiming what I am or what I do. So today we're talking about uh shamanic journeys in particular and so that i think this is perfect that uh, you talk about how there was this traditional kind of shamanism and old paradigm type of way of doing it now there's what's called new paradigm you know when i i did a shamanic journey like years ago once that was the first time i ever done one and i was really confused because it was just a lady drumming mm-hmm. and then that was it and then there was no guided like <laughs> anything yeah. it was just that was it and I I didn't know what to do I just started meditating or something so yeah um, yeah. I know that you are going to be offering this new service that will be um, starting on the solstice you're going to have a special solstice day Mm -hmm. shamanic journey to ignite your inner fire and we're planning to have some uh, next year and beyond that will you'll be doing different shamanic journeys as a new service that you're offering so could you talk to us about what could we expect from that yes yeah 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 this is awesome so in the past i have to say what we did what i did do in the past okay so when i was teaching shamanism when i was teaching my different the different ways of people you know accessing energy i did do the drumming thing okay we would drum it would the drumming the intention of the drumming is it's a monotonous continuous uh sound and what it does is it kind of 
puts you into an altered state so that you can actually travel and, you know, go to different places, that type of thing. So what's happening when I started um, getting away from doing the drumming thing and, and keep in mind, this was actually way back in time. This was in, I stopped doing that kind of thing probably in early 2000s, like 2000, 2001, 2002. Okay. So since then, I don't, I don't use that with people anymore, but basically what happens is we do want to go into an altered state. And here's the thing with the moment I'm going into an altered state, everyone who is with me is pulled into an altered state. Okay. And what happens is like, for example, the shamanic journey in, in the, in the way we, I now do it is I have an intention, like we have, like, you know, lighting up the fire, you know, getting your fire activated. So basically what I, what I do is I start shifting my awareness. The moment I start shifting my awareness, everyone who's in my field or with me, their energy starts to shift and change as well. Okay. And then I start pulling them with me to wherever I'm going. And uh, because we're going into an inner place inside of one, inside of our own selves, so I'm pulling you not to come to me, but I'm pulling you now inside your own self into your subconscious, into your core or what, you know, wherever we're going to be going in that uh, journey, because we want to go, you're going to be one, the part that's activating things. I'm guiding and I'm assisting, but you are the one doing the shamanic journey. Okay, so it's really cool. So rather than, you know, uh, you know, like maybe just relaxing and let somebody else do your do things for you, which is what happens like for me when I, when I do a clear and activation, I'm the one, the doer. Okay, but this is different. You're actually coming with me. You're coming with me into inside of you. We're finding the places within will be activating things, but we'll also be releasing and clearing energy. You're going to be right there helping and assisting doing that because it's in your subconscious. You're going to be discovering things that you didn't even know were in your subconscious. That's another cool thing is you're going to start seeing things and understanding things and memories and different things will start to come up into awareness because you're now in a state of altered consciousness and you're now accessing your subconscious. So again, you're the one that's actually going to be participating and literally doing things to activate that fire or whatever type of journey we are doing, it's participatory. It means you are a part of, you're no longer just someone laying there, you are actively doing, okay? So some people see things that some people have a clairvoyant, some people have the knowing, some people hear things, smell things, taste things. Some people are empathic. It doesn't matter how you get your information or how you work or even in learning how, none of those matter. It's an inner journey within. You'll feel things happening within your own self, inside your body. You'll, I mean, even if you can't see, let's just say, okay, where I'm taking you in, guiding you to a particular place in your body. Let's just say you can't see it, but you can feel it, see? You can feel it. You don't have to see it. You can feel it. You can sense it. Everyone has the ability to sense energy. Some people just do it differently. Some people have multiple ways and other people maybe only one way. It doesn't matter. Everyone senses energy. So whatever way you sense energy, this is what you'll be doing when we're coming in to, you know, get, get that fire going, you know, and then that, that, that first shamanic journey that we're going to be doing. So it's, um, it's like almost like hands on, you know, you feel like you're a part of, but what it also does, which is really cool, is it starts to teach you that you can do this. You know, a lot of people don't think they have any abilities or skills, or when they think of someone like a shaman, they, they put them in some kind of category that it's uh, unachievable, you know, like maybe you've never done anything and it's out of your realm of consciousness or what you are drawn to do, or maybe you are drawn to do, but you don't know how. Okay. So in a sense, I'll be teaching you how to do a shamanic journey. And the cool thing is, is once you know how, once you're able to do that, you can, there's, it just opens up a whole new doorway of opportunity for you to do things within your own self, to change your own realities, to shift your, even shift your own wounding beliefs, all of that. So 
you know, it's it not only is it you're you're going to be participating, you're going to be learning and evolving and waking up. So it's much more than, oh, we're just going to do a shamanic journey, you know? Yeah, one of the reasons why I thought of you doing shamanic journeys as a new service, because it was actually my idea. <laughs> but one of the reasons I thought of that was because I felt that it would be a good way for people to have that experience and then realize they could do this work and then eventually take your other um, teachings and trainings because that's something that a lot of people who they're not sure if they can like right. for example with uh, even awaken the shaman or foundations some people weren't sure about that and i actually was thinking before to offer workshops but then it didn't really that idea didn't really um, pan out it wasn't it wasn't really feasible but then having the shamanic journeys as a doorway where in a way it's kind of, I see it a little bit as a workshop too, because you are going to be leading people through the process yeah. and they're going to have that experience. And um, each time they do it, they're going to get better and better. And of mm -hmm. course, because you're talking about how you are pulling them into that state, they are being um, in a sense, activated into that, mm -hmm. into that mm -hmm. level. Right. So what if someone were to fall asleep? <laughs> <laughs> that does happen. I mean, because here's what happens. Once I start working or when, you know, anytime I, I start shifting my awareness, there's a, a shift in my brain activity. There's a shift in the whole frequency that energy is being felt. So many people actually go into an altered state. Some of them think they know they're not asleep, but it feels like they've fallen asleep and, and they have that wakeful kind of sleep state. Okay. Other people literally do fall asleep because it's going into that alpha way with whatever that first, those first, whatever they're called, when you start to fall asleep and like there's alpha, you know, omega, whatever those are, though, I don't remember what they are, but you go into an altered state. And once you've learned how to do that, then you can start to enter into a, a shamanic state of consciousness on your own because you've done it. Once you've done it, you can continue to do it. Okay. So there is that place where people are feeling like they might have fallen asleep. It doesn't, it's okay, you know, because another part of you is still hearing and working and, and doing whatever, wherever we're going, whatever we're doing, activating, you're still there and you'll have the, you know, you'll be able to have the recording to listen to when you're more, you know, able to stay awake and then you listen to it again. Okay. It doesn't really matter, but people do fall asleep, but it's because they're going into an altered state. So I could see somebody watching this episode and thinking well how is this different from just a normal meditation so can you answer that yeah it's because it's more active when, like if you're just going to do a meditation basically what you're doing most people will close their eyes and if you're meditating oftentimes you might have like a mantra okay some people um do things like i'm not my i am not my body on the breath in or the breath out or you know i'm not my body i'm not my mind it's just a mantra thing what you're trying to do is just you know let things let them because you'll see things coming passing through and you're not like doing okay so the difference is is for one thing that your consciousness your 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 mind is going to be going into a different frequency rather than the meditative energy okay so there's a, a big difference in let's just say okay we're going to go on a journey so we close our eyes we take our awareness and we start to fall deep inside or whatever i'm going to be doing and you're you're working with me you're visualizing it or imagining it or feeling it or sensing it which is different than meditation meditation again i mean medit some people meditate and they're off busy doing doing but the true reason or uh, the true meditation isn't about in doing at all it's that place where you empty the mind where things can arise in awareness you know what i mean it's like when we're in true states of meditation we can get all kinds of understandings or knowings that just start to present but we don't hold on to anything we're not doing anything we're letting things pass through and not attaching so there's a, a major difference because in in the journey work we are doing we are going we are tra traversing different plateaus different planes of consciousness and existence where in meditation you know it's that state of you know i just want to quiet the mind clear the mind be in a you know a, a state of med meditative state and in that again things rise up okay into awareness where we are intentionally going with awareness so for those who may have never done a shamanic journey ever and they're interested in what you're offering how can you prepare someone to like what to expect and how to get the most out of 
this service. Yeah, the best thing is don't come with expectations. See, part of what happens with humans, we all do this. We have a, an idea. Okay, I want to do the shamanic journey. Ah, oh, but the first thing we want to know what it looks like. What's it? What's going to happen? What's it going to feel like? How are we going to do it? So the mind's like trying to understand. Okay, and and in that we start projecting what we think is going to happen. Okay. We do not want to be projecting anything. The best thing you can just start saying is, I'm in the unknown. I don't know. And I'm open and willing. That's the best way to come in to have a great experience. Because if you come in with your own beliefs, projecting what you think something's going to look like, and it's not happening, your mind's going to start kicking in. And I thought this was going to happen, or I thought it would look like this. And then you're interfering with your whole experience. And this is what people do, okay? We want we want to know stuff. So we're trying to understand it, trying to figure it out. And you can't. This is not something you're going to know with your mind. This is not a mind experience. It's a journey. A journey, it means that, you know, the, the journey is going to show you where we're going. It's going to show you what's inside, okay? So you can't know because we're dealing with the subconscious. So the best way to get the very most out of, uh, you know, out of a shamanic journey is, come in open, open. I know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> and then let it blow your mind because all the, you know, things will start happening and that you could have never thought of or never expected. Okay. So you're, you're, you limit your experience by your projections into what you think or sh it should or want it to look like. So Bonnie, you have the program Awaken the Shaman and you may be doing a pre-recorded one to sell in the future. And so how much of these shamanic journeys is similar to Awaken the Shaman and how much is different? Like, would it prepare people to really get a lot out of that program and that, that would accelerate them further? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So Awaken the Shaman. I mean, I actually love Awaken the Shaman, um, but it's really about what it says, Awaken the Shaman. Okay. So not everyone has shamanic abilities, but the thing is, is in this time period that we're in, more and more people actually have the capacity or capability to work in the shamanic, shamanically, okay? So what happens though is like when you start doing the shamanic journeys, you're opening yourself up to a completely different way of, of working, of consciousness, of awareness. And by doing that, when if you were to work and take this Awaken the Shaman, you're already kind of prepared because in Awaken the Shaman, we are doing a lot of uh, uh, visualizations, you know, guided visualizations, because what we're doing is we're teaching you, you know, how to sense energy, but more than that, how to move energy, how to shift energy, how to find energy, you know, it's like that whole tracking, how do you track stuff? How do you find things? So when you've already learned how to go into a, an altered state of consciousness through shamanic journeying, it's going to be much easier for you, faster for you, if you take Awaken the Shaman, you're going to be guided through different things. Like, for example, one of the things I used to do is, is get people to start to smell and taste, you know, get the visual. So I take them, for example, let's just say I take them into, we're going to step into, oh, I know, we're coming through a, a field and there's a doorway. We're going to step through that doorway. We hope we can, what I'm doing is having them literally feel your hand touching that doorknob. Maybe it's chilly, maybe it's cool, maybe it's warm, but it's awakening the senses, okay? So we open that door as we step in. The room is orange, okay? So all we, so I'm giving them colors, visuals. Oh, and there's a table and the table is oranges. See, everything is orange, okay? So what it's doing is like, now you're going to touch that orange, smell that orange, taste that orange. So we're awakening your, your senses on, on these energy planes. Okay. Meaning, you know, your ability to see it, to smell it, to taste it, to know it. So, you know, it's like what it does is it starts to awaken your own senses at different levels so that all of a sudden you're smelling the orange, you're tasting the orange for real. Okay. That's awakening all the shamanic senses or the senses you need to work shamanically. Because when we're when we're dealing with anything, it's about it becoming so real that you're you are there with your awareness. And that's what happens for me personally is um I am there 
with everything I have, everything I am, I'm smelling, tasting, hearing all of it and seeing and knowing. So that's why I'm, you know, can be so alert to any movement, any, anything whatsoever. And another thing too, that, that I, I had to develop this ability, but like if you, anybody has watched me now, it's like, I'm always talking, I'm saying what I'm doing, but I had to learn how to do that because normally I would go in and I'd be like in that state, you would look at me and you think I was dead or something. Okay. But I knew in order to teach, I had to be able to speak what I'm doing. So now I, it's like, it just naturally happens. So no matter what I'm doing, I'm speaking it out loud. So people don't know what I'm doing, but I'm still very much in that altered space and I am in an altered reality. So you're, you're gaining these skills. And so by, you know, if you take that awaken the shaman, you will literally already be ready and able to just really come in and start really developing and expanding so that pretty soon, wow, you got it all. You got the sight, the smell, the taste, the hearing, the knowing. You you know, you're just there with everything. It's pretty cool. So on the solstice, which is December 21st, you're going to be doing this um, first of the shamanic journeys that you'll be having uh, from now on. And it's specifically for uh on a soul, it's specifically on souls this day because the idea is that the energy of that day will assist mm -hmm. in this journey. So, could you talk about that solstice um, energy and what can we expect from this particular? Yeah, um, yeah, one? yeah. This one's really cool. Okay, so on the on that day, actually, the day before the sun, what happens is is the sun's moving. Okay, so it start as you know, most you may know that there, it accelerates and then it starts to slow down. And then like the 20th, the 20, the, on the 20th, there's zero, like the next day, there's zero seconds difference. There's no difference, okay? So we have three days of that where you go, it goes into that zero place. And then on the 21st, it, there's no difference. But usually, uh, and oftentimes on the 22nd, that might be one second different. But there's that time period where we literally have, um, where there's no no difference in the sun where its location okay it doesn't ever do that it only does that twice a year okay and december that's the one that it does and then then come then the opposite would be the six months later where it does the the opposite okay but both both those times there's no movement it's it's stopped in this it's there for in that location no seconds difference i hope i'm making sense and because of that, it creates a different energy frequency on the earth itself, okay? The planet itself has a different vibrational frequency because it's held for, for more than 24 hours at that place, at that, at that place where there's no movement. The sun came to this place and it stopped, stopped. Now, keep in mind, the, moon, the sun never stops other than those two times a year, and it stops, okay? So December 21st, it stops. Okay, so we have like that 48 hours really of dead stop where it's not moving. That affects the energy on the planet big time, okay? So for people like us, we're going to be using that energy to activate people's awarenesses to, you know what I mean? It's, it's more than activating their awarenesses. It's getting, it's like you start tuning in to the frequency and it assists you in doing more shamanic work going into shamanic journeying there's just something that happens energetically when we're held in a frequency where there's no movement of the sun you know it's not shifting it's not moving further further away or closer it's at that moment okay so at that time it's actually closest to the to the earth okay we often think well we're going darker but the sun's actually closer okay so it's closer for like 48 hours non-moving so it definitely affects the energy on an energetic frequency of the body the planet the way oceans everything is affected so we're just utilizing that energy to work even more deeply everyone's got like an inner fire you know there's there's many things that we all have we all you know we all have different um warrior warrioresses you know we have different different uh components of who we are and, you know, it's like the fire within where that's like, it's like a fire where there, we, where we become more alive, more passionate, more focused. Um, it's, it's like an activation of who we are. It's like 
almost like the kundalini you know when the kundalini gets starts to get activated a lot of energy starts to move a lot of creativity and um just more abilities so it's like everyone has strong senses strong abilities everyone's got inner warriors warrioresses everyone's got you know different aspects that we label and sometimes like some people don't have their warrior so that part of them is dormant you know so they are ineffective they can't stand up for themselves different things so the fire too has to do with creativity aliveness passion creativity you know where we're more more aware there's something that happens when our inner fire is lit up it's like the brain gets clearer our decision making is clearer our focus is clearer our intentions are clearer it's like we are on fire okay so that's what we want you know what i mean it's like oh all right i want to really create okay this now i want to really get my inner fire happening because i want to really start writing again or i want to write music or i want to uh you know bake or cook or 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 you know whatever that is whatever your passion is it just makes everything like alive you it's like coming alive like from within okay and it's not like the mind thoughts where we have mind thoughts where we're trying to be alive or trying to be you know focused or our passion or, or that energy it literally comes from within so it's like the fire is within and that fire, just imagine like a fire coming inside of you and expanding out into your whole vibrational frequency into in your body, your cells, your blood, your bones, your tissues, you know, etheric body, mercury body, astral body, mental body, all these different bodies that we are, everything's being activated, even out into the auric field. And when that happens, you just, they're just more you have more ability you're not so tired and now you want to get things done you want to do things because it's now more exciting all right thank you so much bonnie um, that sounds really exciting remember everybody's december 21st is that special solstice event and it's going to be a lot of fun it'll be the first of the shamanic journeys and um hopefully they're going to be we're going to have a lot more next year and you know that's actually a great way to start the next year is on the 21st doing this journey and, and igniting the fire and getting ready for yes. that new year so it's perfect yes. i'll leave links to that shamanic journey below so you could go ahead and check that out um thank you so much bonnie i'm really excited about all these shamanic journeys this is going to be a lot of fun and um everybody if you're watching this on youtube please like the video subscribe comment below let us know your particular ideas that you want. Like if you want Bonnie to do a particular type of shamanic journeys, um, let us know in the comments if there's something particular you would like to see. We plan to do some more for like certain events, like maybe if there's a particular type of full moon that's special or something, and there'll be different like um, maybe events like that. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be targeting some of those um, crucial dates in next year as well. For those listening on Spotify and Apple, please leave a review. It definitely helps us. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, Bonnie.